guys, it's Kelly Taylor here and I am back with another video for Picket Fence Studios. Today we are celebrating a new release. I'm going to be using some products from that. Um, they're all like kind of beach sea themed. So I'm using the, well, I showed you, <laughs> I showed you two options for sentiments because I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, but I'm using the Layering Flora Oversized Ornamental Grass. I am using the Seashells Waiting to be Found. I am using the sentiment um, is from Signature Quotes, the C, and I'm using the stamps and dies for that, as well as the stamps and dies for the seashells. And then the other one I showed you, which I'm sure I'll use in the future, um, is this Find Me by the C word die, and I think that one's super cute as well. From not the new release is this, this actually came out for Halloween, but I love this moon and I use it a lot. They have two sizes. This is the mini, um, it's the Mini Haunted Mood Blending Stencil. So here, I had already put this down on my paper inking palette, and I was trying to get my tape down for the horizon. So we're just stepping directly onto the struggle bus as we start this card, but thankfully that was really the only issue that I had, uh, and I just needed to remove my paper from that palette, use my grid in my background to get my horizon line straight. Um, you can use... Uh, what what is the word I'm looking for? Mask like masking tape for this, um, or low tech tape. I'm using pixie tape, but I did have to like kind of hold my stencil there beforehand, so I made sure I'd have enough room for my moon in the sky portion. And I am going to use weather wood for my moon, but you could also use hickory smoke. I've used them both, and they both work well. So if you have one or the other, you can do it. Uh, the first layer, we're kind of just going around the edges really, really softly. It's going to be really hard to see on camera, but the, I want the moon to be white. So I'm not putting down very much ink and I will get a little bit darker with every application. So moving on to the middle stencil, which is just going to add some more detail. And this is still pretty light, honestly. I'm just going to check it. I can see I need some more on the left hand side. Um, and again, this is still pretty light. The darkest application will go on this very last stencil. And even then, I would say it's maybe like a mid-tone. <laughs> I was not heavy-handed at all with this. I wanted my moon to be nice and bright. Um, it is kind of challenging to see the detail on the camera or in the photos, but in real life, you can see all three of the layers. This stencil also comes with a, a mask for the moon once it's done. I just put Tempo Mono Multi Glue on the back of mine. It's a repositionable adhesive, and um, I've never had to reapply it. And basically, I put it on there once, I smear it around, I wait till it's completely dry, and then I just stick that back to my stencil and put it back in its packaging. For the sky and the sea, we are going to be doing some ink blending using blending brushes. And you could absolutely make this, you know, just a, a traditional blue sky. Um, I have two kind of go-to combos. Uh, one of them is Salty Ocean, Blueprint Sketch, Chip Sapphire, and Black Soot. This one leans more towards the teals, which I like. Um, and this one is Salty Ocean, Mermaid Lagoon, uh, Uncharted Mariner, and Black Soot. So the two, <laughs> the um, first color and the last color are the same. I also decided to add in some pinks and purples just to make it a little bit more interesting. You could do the same thing with greens, um, or you could do more of a sunset kind of feel. Um, I used the picked raspberry and then seedless preserves, but the seedless preserves is kind of like a transition color, and I'm not going to use it the second time around. So if you guys have watched my videos before, you know um, when I'm doing any sort of ink blending, especially with the brushes, they are an easier way to get a good blend, but they don't necessarily put down an enormous saturation of color. So in order to get a really good solid blend with my inks, whether they're distress inks or something else, um, I always do it twice. So I go from my lightest color out to my darkest color. And you'll notice when I got to the section that was blue, I filled the whole thing in with the salty ocean. How you're going to get that deep saturation of color is you have to build up on it. So all the way out to the black soot, the black soot is going to be, you know, really just more towards the top. I've done other videos where, you know, we've done kind of the glow from the moon. There wasn't enough room. There wasn't enough real estate on this card to do that. Um, but that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with the way that it came out. 
So once I get my black soot down, then I'm going to go right back in. And this time we're working from darkest back out to our lightest. And this is going to give us a really good concentration of color. It's going to be well blended and um, really nice and smooth. So that's how I do my ink blending all, all of the time. Now we're out to the Mermaid Lagoon. You may notice that this is getting a little bit darker. Part of that is because we have leftover ink that's kind of sitting around that we're picking up with our brushes, but that's also what helps all the colors blend together. So I worked all the way out to my Salty Ocean, and now I'm going to skip the Seedless Preserves, and I'm just going to go in directly with the Picked Raspberry, because when the Picked Raspberry blends with the Salty Ocean, it's going to create its own purple. We just needed a little bit of help in the beginning to make sure we had a seamless transition. Now, Distress inks are fairly transparent, so whatever color you put on top is going to be the majority of what you see. So before it was a little bit too pinky purple, I'm going to go back in with that Salty Ocean, and now it's blending in much nicer. Before we move on to the ocean portion of it, I'm going to put some stars in the sky. So I just have a scrap piece of paper that I'm using to block the bottom and I'm creating lots of dimension with the stars. So the first one is just clean water, and those are gonna create like really distant stars to add, because I love some shimmer and shine, you guys know that. Um, and this one is just slightly more transparent. This is the liquid white snowflake uh, paper splatter from Picket Fence, and it has a nice shimmer in it. You do wanna shake it up. And then for my most opaque stars, the brightest ones, I am using the Copic Opaque White um, and just flicking that on as well. I do try to keep that one a little bit more to the top because at the bottom, you know, you would be able to see less stars. So now we can go ahead and remove this tape. It's looking very science fiction-y right now, but hang tight with me. <laughs> it will get better. It will become a beach scene. So now that that is done, I'm going to take that same tape that I already used for my horizon line, but this time I'm going to block off my sky. You do want to make sure that all of this, the spatterings that you've done and everything are dry before you move on to this step, or when you put the tape on them, you're going to smear them. I'm just trying to make sure that my tape is lined up with my horizon. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're just going to do them in like with our card upside down. So we're still gonna go from pink to purple to blues to black, um, but this time it's going to be coming down from the horizon line instead of going up. I also was a little bit um, heavier handed with my darker colors because the light is coming from the sky and reflecting on the water. So I did make the water a little bit darker than my sky, and it's going to look a little bit weird until we get the details in that let us know that it's water. But since we've already done this once, I did speed this up. I don't, <laughs> I do not ink blend this fast. I mean, I'm quick, but I'm not crazy. Um, so just doing the same thing that we've already done. And then we're going to um, remove our tape and set this piece aside to work on the other pieces of what is, I, I, well, I would call it our focal point, but honestly, I think when you look at the card, you're kind of drawn to the moon first. Um, you guys hear me talk a lot about, like, we're all on our own little art journeys, and not to be too um, hard on yourself. At this stage in the game with the background, I was feeling like it looked very science fiction-y. Like, it wasn't going to be beachy, but sometimes you have to, I call it in, in watercoloring, I call it pushing through the ugly. Like sometimes you just got to push through the ugly and trust yourself that you know what you see in your head um, because it'll be okay in the end. So don't give up halfway through. Just keep keep pushing on. So for the seashells, I stamped the largest seashells and I actually only ended up using two of them instead of three. And then I cut them out of their, with their coordinating dies. I also cut out that large ornamental grass out of white cardstock. And as I'm sure you gathered from the title, we're going to be doing a really quick shading technique. So I'm going to stick these down to my paper inking palette. This is the I think it's a five, what is it? It's a five by something. Five by six? Five by seven? 
I'm not 100% positive. They have a bigger one, um, but I haven't gotten that one out of the package yet. But we're going to be using our paper pouncers. So with this release, um, Picket Fence released two new sets of paper pouncers, which is Oceans of Blue and o o Ocean Blues and Ocean Greens. That's what they're called. And I'm going to be using the Ocean Blues today. I totally love these because I am a person who doesn't typically mix my blending brushes. Like I have a blending brush or a pouncer for a light blue, a medium blue, and a dark blue. Uh, I realize that's not necessarily reasonable for everybody, but that is how I roll. And that is how I rolled um, before I ever made a living at this. <laughs> I just don't like mixing them. That's just me. There's nothing wrong with mixing them. So... Because I kind of laid out my card beforehand, I had an idea of the way that the light was going to hit. So you'll see with the grasses, I'm kind of adding my color at a diagonal. Now these ones you see me using here are the um, the petite paper pouncers, the little minis. These are great for adding color to the middle of things. Um, and these are not meant for ink blending, like the nice smooth blend that you get with a blending brush. But when you have things like this, where we're going to be, you know, adding some shading on top of these, um, these stamps, and we're going to be adding some shading to these grasses with our Copics, because they're backlit, this is a really, really great way to get a lot of good base color that you know is going to match your scene because you're using the same colors you use to create your background. So this is such a like a quick and easy little way to add the shading. And it's super pretty because they are a little bit smaller and we're consistently going over them and pouncing on, you know, analogous colors, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Um, you could also do monochromatic would be really easy to do. Um, if you started trying to mix some other colors, that would probably be, you know, a little bit more challenging. But this is a really fast way to do that and not have any issues with adding it. And I'm going all the way out to the black, just like I did with the background. Um, now, because I am a colorist, I am still going to go in and add some more shading to this to really kind of bolster up that backlighting effect, um, you know, with the, like the moon kind of, um, hitting on them for the highlights, but there's nothing wrong with the way that these look right now. Like they're, they're not looking too, too bad. And all we did was very quick, you know, a little, a little bit of pouncing with color. So... I can see here, I'm just double checking what I where I need to add my shading. And for the vast majority of this, I'm going to be using cool grays. Now, why cool grays? Because the colors in my cards are cool. The only one that would be considered a warm, maybe, is a pink. But it also depends on what your pink's base is. Picked raspberry is not necessarily a warm um, pink, like you would see with maybe like a coral color. Um, it is on the cooler side. So going in with blacks and cool grays are going to blend the best. What you see me doing here, some of you are going to think I'm crazy and that's totally okay. I'm actually not coloring on the, like the sections of grass, um, except for in the center. I'm actually taking the edge of my pen and rubbing it right along the um, bottom edge. So the paper is absorbing that little bit of color, which is going to add shading to it because now we're creating a darker edge without having to go in and try to color these teeny tiny little um, blades of ornamental grass. If you just run the like the nib of the Copic marker along the edge, you could also um, put a piece of scrap paper underneath this and like color right next to it on the scrap paper and that would work as well. I actually found it to be much easier if I held down the bottom which caused the little palm, like the little grass blades to raise up off my desk. I found it that was the easiest way for me to do it. So once I've done the black and then the C9, I'm going to go in with, they're all sixes. It's a B06, a V06, B like boy 06, 
V like Victor 06 and then an RV 06. So because they're all end in sixes, I know they'll blend really well together. Um, when you're blending color families with Copic markers, you do want to look at that last number and that will tell you whether or not they'll blend nicely together. There are some exceptions to the rules, but for the most part, you're you're pretty safe using numbers that match or that are close to each other. So you could do like a four, five, six, most of those will work well. And then as we're going through the grasses, I'm moving from the blue to the purple to the pink based on the shading that I'm seeing on the grasses. Um, this looks a little crazy because you can see all the marks <laughs> on my glass mat. Um, but once we get it on the card, it'll make a lot more sense. So here with the um, the seashells, these are going to be really great for beach scenes and other beach cards. Um, but for now, I I do want them to be dark because it's a night scene card. And so because of that, I am starting shading with my black that I'm going to work out through my grays. I, I pulled out the C5, but I didn't end up using it for the shading on the seashells. I actually ended up using it for the outline, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um... So here, any the same rules still apply when you're coloring something that is backlit as far as, you know, what kind of shading you want to add. The only difference is it's a little bit more forgiving. Um, you know, we do obviously want to have some high points where we're catching the highlights, but for the vast majority, like the bottom probably 50% is really going to be in shadow. And so I chose to go over those grays with my blue just so that way in real life, you when you were looking at the card, they wouldn't be solid gray. Um, but for the vast majority of that bottom portion, it is going to be really, really dark. And I think people have a hard time with that because it's more abstract you know, having that that super dark section, and a lot of people are afraid of darker colors. However, if you're going to tackle a night scene, we got to get okay with darker colors. So there, I'm just checking to make sure that I'm happy with my colors, and I'm going to go into the bottom edge of my die, and I think I used a C9 originally, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and get it with the black before it's over. So then for the top edge, I'm trying to blend it in with the water. So I'm going in with my B06. Now I already know this is too bright for my background, but it's close. Now when I lay it on there, I can see it's pretty close, but it's too bright. In order to desaturate that to match the the background water, I'm gonna go over it with a C5, and then it's a near perfect match. So we're going to do the same thing for this seashell. And this would just depend, like how you shade it would depend on how uh, you positioned it, what the orientation of the seashell was. This one I know is going to be laying mostly flat. The um, left-hand side of it is going to be back behind another seashell. So it's not going to have nearly as much highlight as this more um, open section does. And again, I'm going to go in with my blacks. Now, I'm not completely discarding all of the um, shape to the stamp. You can see that I've left some um, highlight areas down there in the bottom. But again, these are going to get filled in with darker colors, not not completely black, um, but definitely that bottom part is going to be darker because it is not going to receive as much light from the sky or the moon or whatever your light source is in your particular card. So again, you can see those lighter areas. I'm going to get those um, with the B06 and the V06, just so they have a little bit of color and everything transitions really nicely. I'm not going to necessarily get it with the pink, um, or at least not just the pink, because that area would not have as much of a highlight. It's tucked down below, not only behind another seashell, but also um, behind the rest of its own shell. So here, I also colored in the edge the same way you guys saw me before. I'm double checking this, and I'm just going to give myself a little bit of land or beach or an edge of some land with the black, 
um, so that I have something that I can put my items on. We don't want them just floating out there in the ocean. That wouldn't make any sense. So now I can arrange my items. One of the things that I thought maybe I would like better was if I had grass on the other side as well. And since I knew I was going to be trimming off a large portion of my ornamental grass, I just went ahead and trimmed it beforehand. And then I checked to see if I liked it. Turned out, I didn't like it. Uh, I didn't like the way that they were meeting in the middle and kind of looking like spider legs. Um, you guys know how I feel about spiders if you watch my videos before. Um, so I ended up actually just putting it on the other side, like the main side that it was on and scooting it down. Let's talk about the water. Um, so the first thing that I'm doing, and this is only going to work if you're using a ink that uh, is water reactive. Because I'm working on regular Nina cardstock, I'm not working on watercolor paper. I'm being careful not to use a ton of water, but I am going in with my paintbrush and just clear water and just doing some kind of uh, really light strokes, letting my paintbrush skip where it wants, just kind of all over to create some texture. And then I'm going to go in with a white glitter pen. Um, and this I'm going to then start kind of putting in the reflection of the moon. You'll be able to see it just a little bit. This isn't going to be a huge amount of white. It's just going to be a little bit. It is going to be some shimmer as well, like where you would see um, the light hitting those, you know, areas would maybe be a little bit sparkly, especially in the water. And I'm going to do the same thing for my stamped die cuts as well as my regular die cuts. So any of the areas where I want that highlight to be seen, I am going to go in with that um, clear glitter pen. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This one, is this one white? I think this one is. No, I think it's the clear. I think I, on the grasses and the um, stamped and die cuts. I did the clear, but I did do the white in the background. Now to really bolster up that reflection and make it more of a, you know, less sci-fi, more of a beach scene, <laughs> um, I'm going to go in with my white gel pen. And again, I'm just going to let this skip um, to put my lines in. If I'm not happy with the amount of lines I have, you can always go back in and put more. I have a tendency to put more closer to the moon and then less as it gets further away. I'm also going to use this white gel pen to put in some really bold highlights on my stamped images and my die cuts. This is what's going to help us really set the scene for this night time and the light reflecting and these super bright highlights. Um, so I'm going in with the white gel pen and, and doing that, just following the shape of those items there. And even though you're going to think I'm a crazy person, I'm doing the same thing to the grasses. Um, I need that white to be in there. Now, if you are a person who maybe you have better control ink blending or with your uh, Copic markers and you can leave white area, then you wouldn't need to do that. But I had a hard time leaving any white area. And so consequently, I had to go back in and add it. Now that I have everything where I want it to be, I just glued each... Um, die cut to each other so that I can then pick up the whole thing and uh, flip it over and put glue on it all at one time. I just find that to be easier to make sure that I'm getting things positioned where I want. If you would rather go one at a time and glue them down as individual pieces, also fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I did add glue to all of those little grasses. I am using the uh, My Sweet Petunia glue press. It has a fine uh, tip on it. It makes it super easy to just get in there and do little dots. Um, if you're not familiar with it, Picket Fence does carry it as well. It's a wonderful tool, especially if you like more intricate die cuts or word dies. Once I have this in place, I am going to trim off those extra grasses. I told you I knew I was going to have to trim them off. And then uh, we're, we're nearly done. We're almost done with the car. Um, so I did go back in with the black and color in anything um, that was sitting on top of that black land. So if it was the edge of one of the die cuts or for the grasses, like the bottom of it, I colored that all in black so everything would match. And then for my sentiment, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And then in the, um, what is it? Signature. Hold on. I already forgot it, guys. I told you at the beginning and I are signature quotes, um, signature quotes. C. look, now I'm going to have to find it because it's going to bother me. 
Did I have it right? Yes. Signature quotes. The sea. Um, in there, they, it has this one that says, the ocean is full of magic. Find some. And I thought that was really kind of like fitting for this uh, pink, purple, shimmery kind of ocean night scene we had going on. But it was too long for what I wanted. Oh, let's talk about the trivet. I forgot about this. So this is something that um, Picket Fence has come out with. It is heat resistant, uh, food grade silicone. And basically you can use it like I did to set your hot heat tool on, or you can use it as a coaster, or you could use it as decor um, in your craft room. Um, but I know that I always preheat my heat gun and so it is nice and piping hot and then I have to, you know, kind of wait until it cools down to be able to put it back where I need it. Um, so that was really handy to have just to have somewhere to set it. Plus who doesn't love a rainbow? So for the sentiment, this sentiment was too long. It has a dash in between the two. So I actually just cut around, like cut right through the dash to make my sentiment smaller. So I could have just used it as the ocean is full of magic. Um, and that would have been no problem. These were popped up on foam tape. Uh, but I decided to stack it and put the fine sum underneath it. Um, and then that little white, that little small section of white that was still showing from the embossing, I just colored it in with my Copic marker. Um, if you look really hard in real life, you would be able to see the shine, uh, but you'd have to be looking really, really hard. For the accents on the, um, what is that? On the sentiment, I used two of the new sequin mixes, which are Island Blues and Footprints in the Sand. And then I always like to, with my rhinestones, I like to take my glossy accents and put like a little dollop in the middle. Um, it doesn't take away from the shine and it just helps me to make sure that they're going to be adhered. And then that's it. We made it, we made it all the way through. So here's our little beachy magic night scene. I hope um, that you guys picked up some tips for just quickly and easily shading your die cuts. I hope it was super helpful. I hope that you'll check out the new release. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.